Alrighty guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start the hunt. The uh, monster that I'm choosing to do today is the Kirin, uh, because it is one of the smallest and hardest to hit monsters with the Kinsect. It does give people a bit of trouble. Um, so I figured I'd go with a monster that uh, a decent amount of people find relatively difficult to fight. So uh, preparations for my glaive. I went on ahead and checked the hunter's notes to see that it is weak against fire. I am grabbing my thunderproof mantle and then we are going to head out. As a side note too, it's not necessary, but I usually do the shield spire for my cat when it comes to monsters like this. Because uh, anytime the monster spends not looking at you is time well spent. So our target has been located. I'm not going to show you guys the entire hunt, but I will uh, go through key points to show you guys um, different methods uh, and strategies in which to use the Kinsect and um, the reason why this build exists as it does. So as you can see, I um, shot my bug at the monster to kind of agitate him. Uh, so when I grapple on him, he doesn't immediately roar me off. I don't know how strong Kieran's roar is, but that happens with pretty much every monster if you don't have earplugs. Uh, and the first thing you should do, the most important thing, is to grab your Kinsect uh, Slinger ammo. So that way you can feed your Kinsect and get that red buff as quickly as possible. And now you can see the numbers are significantly higher. We're doing 65 per hit on the horn, 47 on the body, and that'll fluctuate throughout the battle. Kieran really only has two hit zones. I mean, there are more. You'll, you'll see the damage um, change basically if you hit his hind tail or his hind legs if you hit his tail uh, the numbers change uh, to a certain degree but it's not it's not massive it's either most of the time it's going to be a body hit or a headshot uh, you want to go for headshots as much as you can but that's not always possible or easy for that matter even when he's stationary it's still pretty easy to miss uh, if you suck like I do um, but as I said that's what you want to go for uh, sometimes it's good when he's moving around like this to, to pop the tracker onto him and let your bug attack him for a moment, especially if you're going for a knockout, which uh, brings me to uh, another point that I didn't bring up about the bug in the beginning uh, half of the video. This is a blunt bug, and I use blunt because knocking down monsters is extremely beneficial to this build, and having them laying down stationary for you to just wail on their head can even put monsters in an infinite loop. Uh, where you just keep knocking them down over and over as long as your aim is good enough. So uh, there's the method to that madness. It's, it's very useful. Uh, as you saw just a moment ago, the Shield Spire uh, Stooge was out and it was taking up a good amount of his attention, which is what you want to happen in a situation like this. Um, but he does kill it pretty quickly, so be mindful of that. If you wait for your cat to put down his on its own, and then you command it to do another one, you can get one, you can get them going back to back, which is really nice. Uh, so keep that in mind also. So there it is guys, that epic knockdown, that's what you want to get after hitting the monster several times in his head. And as you can see here, I am able to wail on him constantly and do a consistent 73 damage per hit. Now that was a ridiculous amount of hits. Uh, and if you think about this comparatively, when we're talking about a uh, damage window for a great sword, hammer, or anything like that, that easily uh, either matches or surpasses the type of damage that you would have been able to put out in that amount of time with those heavier weapons. It's pretty nice. Um, it is pretty nice. Like I said, uh, the, the speed of the fight is really going to come down to your aim when it comes to a monster like this, but uh, I'm not a speedrunner. Uh, I, I don't play this game to kill everything as quickly as possible. That's not a priority to me. As long as the monster dies and I don't, uh, that's really all I care about. Um, and and the, the damage is only amplified when you're in a group. Uh, so if you're worried about uh, not putting out as much damage, especially if the monster has three other targets to go after, the less time it spends on you, the more time you have to whack it in the head with your bug. So... Um, you know, and you're, as, you, as you can see, my health has barely dropped at all. Even even when I do get hit, it really does almost nothing. Uh, bringing bombs and a sleep weapon for your cat is also very beneficial. Uh, because your cat will put the monster to sleep at least twice, I've seen. And blowing them up and getting that extra uh, 400 damage is really nice. As you can see, I did get the sleep crit. Uh, while the monster was down and my Kinsect did 133 damage plus 200 something damage for each bomb. That's a pretty good damage right there. 
Uh, I did take a hit there, but two hits with the bug filled me right back up, as you can see here. Uh, if I ever get the second hit off. <laughs> yeah, two, two hits with the bug pretty much after a, a shock like that pretty much topped me off completely. And once again, the Stooge is up again, and that's what he's focusing on. Like I said, it, it's pretty consistent. Um, I really like the build that I've put together now, and it works for my playstyle. But as I said, you're going to be experimenting quite a bit and uh, doing some different things. Uh, trying to see what exactly works for you and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that yet another knockdown there and uh, Here you go as you can see there those couple those first couple hits were like 30s. That's because my bug uh, Buff dropped right then so I had to top it back off and I lost a bit of damage there, but it's fine It's not a big deal chase it down keep the fight going So for these glorious moments when Monster Hunter is being Monster Hunter, as you can see, I got super comboed there and uh, basically hit with a bunch of status effects that you literally can do nothing about. That is where speed eating comes in. Uh, you get really good heals off of your bug alone and you typically don't need to use potions, but there are times like that uh, when the game is just like, yeah, we are, we are going to now perform a series of events that you literally have no control over. Uh, and we are going to force you into a position where you're just you're just gonna take a ridiculous amount of damage and uh, You are at our mercy and when that happens uh, Speed eating is a lifesaver and gets you right back on track and your bug uh, Can just start healing again if you're super confident uh, Maybe just don't do it. Uh, I know the general consensus here is a uh, get good Which is a very good statement to use in this scenario when I keep missing the monster That's directly in front of me with my kinsack because my crosshair was slightly off kilter <laughs> But um, like I said uh, That is why these uh, contingency skills I guess are in place uh, for situations like that Don't get discouraged. Just uh, have a backup plan as far as slamming the monster into the wall is concerned, this isn't the guiding land, so I don't really prioritize it all that much uh, unless I am in the guiding lands, but it is something that you can do. It knocks the monster down for a little while so you can get a good amount of hits off again. So if the monster is weak and uh, you see that window of opportunity, uh, throw them into the wall. You get uh, at least a good four or five shots off and that's anywhere from 60 and up per hit. We're talking some pretty sufficient damage. It's a, it's, it's a nice thing to do. Here you'll see another really good example of utilizing the Stooge to the best of your ability. Uh, he's going to focus in on it and uh, do damage on it and focus on not shooting the power of Thor up your butt every chance he gets, which is great. Uh, it's a, like I said, it's a really, really nice distraction. As you can see, what this monster is pretty much dropping here are the dragon pods, which are really good. They don't last as long as the other pods uh, as far as the buff is concerned because the buff's length is actually dictated by which kind of uh, a um, slinger ammo you have. Uh, and the dragon pod, from my experience, has been the shortest length. Uh, but that's okay because you get seven of them. Uh, so whenever the monster ends up dropping another one, my recommendation to you is to use, like, let's just say for now, uh, what you see here, I have five out of seven. Uh, five out of seven slinger ammo. If he drops another dragon pod and say, for instance, transitions and leaves the area, uh, what you should do is want, uh, re up your bug, uh, repower up your bug, even if it hasn't run out, and grab that second set of pods to top yourself off. Uh, so that way, um, you, you constantly have ammo available, or food, I guess, available for your Kinsec to keep them powered up for the fight. And there you have it, folks. The monster is slain. Took 20 minutes to kill this monster, and I know uh, to all the elites, they're going to turn their nose up at that and say, Wow, that's super slow. Who would waste their time like that? The answer is me. I would waste my time like that. And uh, so would anybody else who is willing to give this... Uh, armor set a try or just the kinsect a try i mean 
I don't dub it the 15th weapon for nothing. It may not be the fastest, but it definitely is a valid option when it comes to defeating monsters that you were particularly having trouble with. So um, this set isn't for everyone. I didn't make this video for everyone. Uh, obviously the type of people that are going to come here and look at this are the type of people that are intrigued about using it. If you are not one of those people, then play your way. Whatever way you play is great, as long as you ain't carting. That's my philosophy. If you ain't carting or running out of time, then you're doing alright in my book. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I tried to cram as much information as I can in here, especially considering the last video I did was lacking. And let me know what you think about Monster Hunter's 15th weapon. Don't forget to give the video a like and subscribe on the way out, especially if you learned something new. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I got an extra special series in the work for you guys that I think you'll like. So uh, be on the lookout for that. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna shine some light on Monster Hunter's 15th weapon. We need to make this a thing. So thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you guys on the next one.